Here's another case of pulmonary fibrosis. And so on the surface, if you were trying to categorize this using the Fleischner or multi-society guidelines, you just call this UIP, I think. There's a little bit of consolidation here, but let's just assume that's inflammatory for the sake of the pulmonary fibrotic pattern. But certainly it's basal predominantly, predominant, certainly it looks like in most areas it's peripheral predominant as well. There's some suggestion of bronchovascular involvement in the left lower lobe here though, possibly in the right lower lobe as well. But for the purpose of this talk, and obviously within the right upper lobe and left upper lobe, it does look like it's peripheral predominant. Let's just assume it is peripheral and basal predominant, and we're gonna call this a UIP pattern. It has a little bit of an odd look to it though, doesn't it? Almost all the fibrosis is made up of honeycombing. So this is something we would say is consistent with the exuberant honeycombing sign, something we published on uh, just a couple years ago, which links pulmonary fibrosis as being associated with connective tissue disease rather than idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. These are all patients with a UIP pattern of pulmonary fibrosis. And we said that if we um, had this exuberant honeycombing sign, defined as greater than 70% honeycombing within the, the areas of pulmonary fibrosis, we would invoke that sign and it was strongly associated with connective tissue disease, which this patient has. This patient does indeed have connective tissue disease. Nice example of that. Also, we do see that in the upper lobes, there is this asymmetric predominance of pulmonary fibrosis anteriorly. And so that's another sign that, that was talked about in that paper called the anterior upper lobe sign which is in conjunction with these findings of lower lobe fibrosis. And so that also is associated with connective tissue disease rather than idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, even if you have a UIP pattern of pulmonary fibrosis.